Hey students, this is lesson 9-5, completing the square. Uh, we're going to review a couple things first here about uh, solving equations and uh, a little bit of the review is about how you use square roots to solve squared equations. So go ahead and do this. I'm going to pause here. All right, you can solve any quadratic equation by completing the square. This method turns every x squared plus bx into a perfect square trinomial. You complete the square by adding the quantity b divided by 2 squared to x squared plus bx, where b is the coefficient of the x term. So that's kind of a little bit difficult, thing, but basically what we're saying is, if we have something like this, we'll say we have x squared plus, uh, I don't know, 8x, and that's equal to 0. One way we could solve it is by adding uh, 16 both sides. Because when I do that, I get uh, a trinomial that can be squared, a uh, binomial squared. And once I have that equal to zero, or once I have that equal to something, now I can take the square root of it because the square root of a number squared is just that number, so it, it'll equal this x plus 4. And that's one way to solve squared problems. So here we go. Um, we're going to use, uh, in order to do use this process, we have to understand what, uh, what makes it a perfect square trinomial. And the way we do that is, remember that uh, when I factor this, whatever, and this is a perfect square, I'm going to have x minus something. And these two numbers multiplied together equal this c. But these two numbers added together equal negative 20. So I can just take that negative 20, which is my b, divide that by 2, and then square it, and that will be my c. So c is equal to b divided by 2 squared. So in this case, it is negative 10 squared is 100. So what I'm saying here is when I add 100 to this, it'll be a perfect square trinomial because it's now equal to the quantity x minus 10 squared. So to find c, all you do is take b divided by 2 and square. All right, I'm going to let you try that. All right, so we're going to use this idea to solve an equation. Uh, we Right now, we've run into a little trouble here. Um, I, I can't solve this by taking the square root because the square root of x squared plus 2x is not, uh, it's not a perfect square. So when I try and take the square root of that, I'm going to get a, uh, a radical in my answer. But if this was a perfect square trinomial here, then I could take the square root of it. And so what I need to do is just think of what number do we add onto this, what value can I use for c to make this a perfect square trinomial? And we just learned that all we need to do is take b and divide it by 2 and then square it to get that. b is our coefficient of our x term. So uh, 2 divided by 2 squared is equal to 1 squared, which is 1. So if I just add 1 there, um, that's going to be a perfect square trinomial. Now if I add 1 to that side, I also have to add 1 over here. So now I'm going to rewrite this as, uh, as a binomial square. And over here, that's equal to 9. Now I can take the square root because the square root of x plus 1 squared is just x plus 1. And remember that 9 has two square roots. So uh, there's uh, 
both positive and negative 3 are the square roots of 9. And so now I have two things I need to solve here. I need x plus 1 to equal positive 3 and x plus 1 to equal negative 3. And so x is equal to So x is equal to 3 minus 1, and x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4. And you can check that just to make sure they work. So uh, if I do 2 squared plus 2 times 2, I hope that's equal to 8. And it is, because 2 squared is 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. Also, I need... Uh, negative 4 squared plus 2 times negative 4 equal 8, and that's 16 plus negative 8, which is 8. That one works also. All right, go ahead, you try that. See if you can solve one. All right, there's your answers. Okay, uh, so here we, uh, what are the solutions of the equation x squared plus 12x minus 20 equals 0? And in this case, uh, if you look at this right now, it is not perfect square trinomial. Uh, we would like, if, if our number here is 12, then we would like this number to be half of 12 is 6 squared is 36. We would like that to be 36. Now you could think of what number would you add to negative 20 to make it 36. But I think it would be easier if we start by just add 20 to both sides so we get the 20 over here and then we're just dealing with this number here this 12 so we know our c in this case has to be b divided by 2 squared so 12 divided by 2 squared which is 6 squared is 36 so now i can add 36 and i'm just going to add 36 to that side also now this is a perfect square trinomial, so it can be written as a binomial square, x plus 6, and 20 plus 36 is 56. And uh, so now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, so x plus 6 is plus or minus the square root of 56. At this point, um, 56 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to go to my calculator to get the solutions to both of these. This equation, positive square root of 56, and where x plus 6 equals negative square root of 56. So um, for one answer, I need to do square root of 56 minus 6. Well, for both of the answers I need. So I need um, square root of 56 minus 6 and the square negative square root of 56 minus 6. So I'm going to use my calculator here to get that. Let me pause a second and get that up. Now remember, we wanted the square root of 56 minus 6. Make sure you put that parentheses in there. And then, so one of our solutions is about 1 and a half. Now press second enter to get your other solution. Because then all you have to do is go back and change your original equation. In this case, we want negative square root, and I'm going to do second delete so that I can insert a negative sign there, and then hit enter. And so about about one and a half, and about negative thirteen and a half are my solutions. So x is about one point five, and x is about negative thirteen. All right, I'm going to let you try that. I'm going to pause here while you. if you can do this problem. All right, problem four here. Eduardo has two square pictures surrounded by two-inch frame as shown below. Uh, the combined area of the pictures in frame is 126 square inches. What is the side length x of each square picture? 
So let's uh, let's just set this up a little. So the pictures themselves are square. So that means that distance is x, x, from there to there it's x. And then the frame is 2, so 2 inches would be added there and added there. So the overall dimensions are 2x plus 4 and x plus 2. And it says the combined area of the pictures and frame is 126. So that means that if I multiply, if I multiply out the dimensions, length times width, I get 256. So now if I multiply that out, I get 2x squared, I'm using foil here, uh, 8x plus 4x is 12x. Plus 16 equals 126. And now I'm going to set it up so I have a perfect square. Um, one thing I can do here, though, is uh, Notice that every term I have here is an even number, so I could divide everything by 2. So essentially what I'm doing is factoring out a 2, but dividing one both sides by 2 is not going to change the way this factors. So I'll divide everything by 2, and now uh, I'm going to set this up so I can find, turn this into a perfect square. So I just want the x squared plus the 6x. I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. That gives me 63 minus 8 is 55. Now I'm going to take half of b, which is half of 6 is 3, and square that, and I get 9. So adding 9 to both sides makes this a perfect square trinomial. Then I can write this as the quantity x plus 3 squared, and that's equal to 6. Four. and take the square root of both sides now and I get x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 64 positive and negative square root of 64 is positive and negative 8 and so I have two equations x plus 3 is equal to 8 and x plus 3 is equal to negative 8. And so if I subtract 3 from both sides, I get x equals 5. And x equals negative 11. And since we're talking about um, uh, dimensions of a picture, having x be negative 11 doesn't make sense. So x equals 5 is, uh, is my answer. And that was my original square. So this length is 5. And the width is 5 since it's a square. All right, I'm going to let you try that. You can check back with your answers. Here's a quick way to find both your answers. Just change the sign you need. And the negative 8.68, that doesn't make sense because we're talking about dimensions. So the answer is about 6. The length is about 6 feet. All right. Finish this up. Lesson check. Explain how using square roots is similar to completing the square. Both require using square roots to solve. Explain how using square roots is different from completing the square. When completing the square, you must first create a perfect square expression when you're completing the square.
right, that's the end of the lesson. i'll see you tomorrow.